But Liam, the film I gave you this week, Liam, yes, was The Santa Claus. It was. Which is quite different to the film you gave me. Well, I mean, if we think about it, Nerd on Nerd, right, and especially Culture Swap, is all about broadening the other person's awareness of certain topics, yes. right? Um, so, for example, last week, uh, I, I wasn't particularly aware of John Dies at the end. You weren't aware of Spider Baby. By the end of that episode, we both had a lot more awareness. Yeah, yeah. So you gave me The Santa Claus. Yes, a children's classic from when I was a boy. Yes, which came out in 94. Yep. Um, I'm going to say I went above and beyond this week. You did. And I'm not necessarily best impressed with the fact that you went above and beyond. I'm sorry, but I want this podcast to do well, and I, I'm going to do what I can. Right. I don't think what you've done is going to help the podcast. Well, we'll see, because not only did I watch The Santa Claus, I also watched The Santa Claus 2. And then I watched The Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause. Now, you gave me The Santa Claus, and that's what I'm going to predominantly talk about, but I would like to mention the sequels at the end. That's fine. I'll allow it. So, I, the reason why I got all three, by the way, is because I found a really nice Blu-ray box set of them. When did that arrive, Liam? Yesterday. Right. <laughs> so, I had a fun night last night. What was your opinion of The Santa Claus? Well, first, before we even get into the movie, I put the disc into my Blu-ray player, and I was a little bit concerned because... There was a very strange advert at the start okay. where it was using scenes from Pinocchio. Have you seen Pinocchio? The original Disney film. Yes, yep. the classic. Um, do you remember the bit where it goes quite dark and he sort of turns into an ass, is it? Yeah, he turns into a donkey. Yeah, he turns into a donkey and there's that scene where there's people smoking and playing snooker. Yeah. Right, there's scenes for that and then a warning about secondhand smoke and a link to a website becomeanx.org. Did you uh, go on the website? I did not. You should have. I just thought it was weird that we're starting this lovely Christmas classic with a warning about smoking and quitting smoking because secondhand smoke affects children. And I'm thinking, who are you targeting here? Because surely this is a movie for kids. They don't have to worry about smoking. And I'm not being funny. I think most adults, if they were to get a kid a Blu-ray like the Santa Claus, they'd plonk him in front of the TV, stick it in, and then fuck off and do something adult. Yep, that's fair. So that that just confused me. Before we even started the movie, I was like, what's going on? Then the movie starts. And I have to say, much to my surprisement... <laughs> <laughs> that's not a word, but go for it. I like it. I actually didn't mind it. Yeah. Yeah, after John dies at the end last week, I was dubious. What? And <laughs> right, <laughs> no. And the thing is, when you recommended this to me last week, you didn't do it in a way that was like you're definitely going to like this. You did it in a way that was like I've kind of run out of things to suggest, and this is no, just the best I can do. No, that's not true at all. I didn't say I'd run out of things to suggest. Okay, no, no. All right, we so... were specifically finding Christmas films. Yes, I said I think it's really hard to find a Christmas film that you haven't seen. Yes, and then so I went, I found one that I liked as a kid, and then it turned out you hadn't seen it. Yeah, and but you didn't sell it to me in a way that was like, I'm confident you're going to like this. I don't want to jade you to these films before you see them. And that's fair enough. And like I said, I was pleasantly surprised. You lowered my expectations, exactly. and they were met, if not exceeded. <laughs> so give the, li- the listeners who haven't seen The Santa Claus, give them a brief synopsis of what happens. All right, here we go, guys. It's Christmas. We've got Tim Allen, and he's divorced, got an annoying little kid... On Christmas Eve, Santa Claus lands on their roof, falls off it, disappears magically, and then but he leaves his clothes behind, obviously. Tim Allen puts on the Santa jacket and basically becomes Santa Claus. That's the synopsis in a nutshell, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I remember. Does he yeah. not kill Santa Claus? It, not. I thought it was his fault that Santa fell off the roof. Right, he hears them on the roof, he comes out and he says, hey you, and that startles Santa, right, that's and it, he yeah. falls off the roof. So I wouldn't say, I think you've been watching too much Christmas Evil, he doesn't kill no, Santa he, Claus. he actively murdered Santa Claus, right? Not quite, but... At the very least, manslaughter. Well, mm, don't know if I'd agree with that. All right. The movie is very Christmassy, okay? Yeah. Sorry, you have to... <laughs> Did you expect me to reply? <laughs> All right, sorry, I'll reply better next time. Okay. One thing that I wasn't sure about with the movie is the timeline. 
Uh, by the end, it became quite clear that it took place over the space of a year. But when you're watching it, I, I, I actually spent a little bit of time trying to figure out when all these things were happening because, like, you had the whole becoming Santa Claus and flying in the sleigh and delivering presents. And then literally it felt like the next day the kid was at school talking about that. Right, yeah. So the timeline wasn't best best clear, but that's okay. Uh, Tim Allen is the main character. He's okay. I, I, did, I didn't think great things, but I also didn't hate him. Yeah. His kid, who was played by Eric Lloyd, he was also in Dunstan Checks In, you know. I've never seen Dunstan Checks In. Oh my god. Well, that has to be rectified at some point because okay. it is delightful. But a kid in a, I think... I mean, it's easily been 15 plus years since I've seen it. Yeah. If I remember rightly, it's a kid in a hotel with a monkey. Oh, I haven't seen it, but I know what film you're talking about. Yeah, Dunstan checks in. Okay. Anyway, so Eric Lloyd plays Tim Allen's kid, and I always have issues with children in film. Yeah. They very rarely are good. And the thing is, I'd say predominantly children are cast in films in quite cutesy, oh, I'm adorable sort of roles. And that just makes me feel a little bit sick in my mouth. <laughs> so. Yeah, fair enough. He was mostly annoying, but he also, when he wasn't on screen, I could tolerate it. Okay, <laughs> good, right. So, so far, so far you've said Tim Allen was all right <laughs> and the kid was rubbish. So what yeah. did you enjoy about this movie, Liam? What I did like, uh, Judge Reinhold played um, Tim Allen's ex-wife's new partner. Okay, I sort of vaguely remember He's he's like a douchebag psychologist, and I liked him. Yep. He was good. And I also want to shout out the costume department, because they did a brilliant job at finding the most hideous sweaters for this guy to wear. Are they, are they that bad? Oh, honestly. And I watched it in high definition, <laughs> so it was like assaulting my eyes, but in a way that I loved. <laughs> nice. So that was good. Um, So... Tim Allen works at a toy company before he becomes the Santa Claus. And then once he puts on the suit, he kind of gets in the sleigh and is is flown to the North Pole where he discovers all of the elves that make the toys. He meets Bernard, the head elf, who's played by David Crumholtz. Okay. Who you will recognise from other movies, but I couldn't name you a single one of them. It's just I saw him and I was like, mate, I know your face. Yeah, yeah. One of cheeky little elf. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we also, we see all of these little elves and we find out that it's the Santa Claus with an E at the end because when he puts on that jacket, he basically has somehow unwittingly signed a contract that says he's now the new Santa and he has to kind of give his life up. (laughs) Essentially. (laughs) Really positive way of looking at it, Liam. (laughs) But I mean, it's not wrong. Um, No, no, true. He also starts putting on weight and growing a big beard and his hair goes white and he starts resembling Santa Claus. And this is what I liked about the movie, okay? And I don't know if you're necessarily going to agree with this, okay. but to me, it always felt like it was one step away from becoming a horror film. <laughs> really? Honestly, right? So, towards the start of the film, you've got this weird like psychological element where all of the adults are really concerned because this kid completely believes that his dad is Santa Claus and Tim Allen wakes up the next day convinced it was all a dream so there's this kid who's like my dad is Santa Claus and all of the adults are like this is not good (laughs) there are issues with this child here which need to be addressed and the fact that obviously uh, the stepfather although I don't know if they're technically married but the stepfather figure he's a psychologist so he's getting involved then you've got Tim Allen putting on the weight and growing the beard, so we've got some body horror there, because if you actually think about it, he says at one point he gains 40 pounds overnight. <laughs> he also shaves in the morning, and by the afternoon, he's got like a full Father Christmas beard. Yeah, yeah. And all of this is also tying into this kid who's like, my dad's Santa Claus. And then, like, the kid's mum and the stepfather are blaming Tim Allen's character, saying, you know... You're not helping him get away from this ridiculous fantasy that he's living in. Couldn't Tim Allen have just proved that it was happening? I did wonder that while I was like, watching. Like, by shaving in front of the, them and being like, look, seriously, I've shaved. Yeah, there is there is literally a little bit later on, as he really starts becoming Santa Claus, a scene where he shaves in front of a mirror, and then the beard, literally, like, five seconds later, just magically grows. Yes, I remember that scene. Yeah. He also goes to the doctor, and, 
you know, does some running on a treadmill and the doctor's puzzle as to why he's putting on all this weight. Um, he also picks up a taste for milk and cookies and, you know, the typical things that you would expect Santa Claus to eat. Shoe polish. Well, maybe not. Uh, but that's that's the other adults in his life. That's what they think is contributing to his weight gain. Yeah. So, yeah, to, to me, always just one step away. There's also a scene where elves kind of attack. Um, so the next year, Tim Allen has embraced that he's Santa Claus. Um, the kid's pet, the kid's mum and stepfather have got the police involved because they're really worried. They've put a restraining order on him. So it gets a little bit serious at times. Yeah, it's that, not, that's not light. It's not a light-hearted romp, shall we say. Not like what I gave you. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, um, there's a scene where there's these flying elves and it's ELFS and I can't remember what it stands for now but it was fucking ridiculous <laughs> it was you know like uh, in S.H.I.E.L.D. when it's like what what does that mean and he yes. says it means someone really wanted it to spell S.H.I.E.L.D. does it feel like that it felt exactly like that so there's a scene where uh, essentially Tim Allen gets arrested and the elves fly and break him out of prison oh okay and there's a cop right who suddenly gets surrounded by these children who then like tie him up in in kind of like wrapping paper sort of stuff yeah and they stick a donut in his mouth again if that was to actually happen quite scary yeah we are always seriously we are always brushing up to the edge of horror where if someone like me were to come along and just push this movie a little bit more in that direction it would be terrifying (laughs) yeah I guess so and that's kind of why I liked it now there was some dodgy CGI I'm going to be honest like it was, it was what early nineties. Yeah. So we can't expect it to be great. And what was disappointing is there was some pretty poor animatronics for one of the reindeers. Oh, one okay. thing I didn't quite get: Comet seems to be the main reindeer in this one. Where's Rudolph? Well, to be fair, Rudolph shouldn't be the main reindeer. Why not? He's not the main reindeer. Even in the song, he's not the main reindeer. He leads the way. No, he leads the way when it's foggy. Comet has been dealing with that. For years, Liam, that reindeer has been Santa's most faithful servant. Is the wrong word for a reindeer? A steed. Steed. But and then Rudolph comes along because it's foggy and he's like, "Look, my red nose. I don't know if you've shone a red light in a fog, Liam. Not that fucking great, actually." But Rudolph comes Whoa. along. And he's like, I'm going to lead the way. It's it's pretty good if you want other people to see you. Yeah, that's not what Santa wants. That is the exact opposite of what Santa wants. Yeah. Well, anyway, this addresses that then, because Rudolph doesn't really get a mention. All about Comet. Good job, Santa Claus. Yeah. There is one scene I would like to just briefly mention. Are there, are there boobs? There are not boobs. Okay. Good. Unfortunately, the Santa Claus was devoid of boobs. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I'm okay with that. There was one scene, and I was watching it, and I was just thinking, this must have been horrendously cringy for Tim Allen to act in. Okay. So, he gets to the North Pole... He's being taught all of these things he needs to know about being Santa. There's a little elf called Judy. Now, all the elves in this film are played by children. Right. But within, you know, the mythology of the film, the elves are like hundreds of years old, okay? Does she hit on him? She thinks he's hitting on her. When he makes makes a comment and she responds with, I'm sorry, I'm seeing someone in rapping. And I just couldn't help but think how awkward that must have been for Tim Allen to perform. Well, I'm sure the man's a professional, Liam. You couldn't have told it was awkward for him. He nailed that scene. But I was watching it, just feeling mortified for him. Yeah. I would also like to point out, Bernard, the main elf, bloody awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, I don't don't remember the elves particularly. No. And so the movie all ends, right, with everyone just kind of accepting that Tim Allen is now Santa Claus. Yes. And there's not really a good moment where this happens it just kind of happens quite suddenly (laughs) everyone just sort of goes oh he's Santa yeah the kid has always believed right and the mum just it's it's Christmas Eve he's just broken out of prison he's gone back to the kid and the mum just looks at him and suddenly is like you are Santa Claus now there's a little bit that happens earlier on where she's talking to her new partner and they're talking about when they stop believing in Santa Claus yeah and she said she wanted this hot date game, but she never got it, and that's when she knew, and she was aged, like, I don't know, 8 or 12 or something. 
and the the dickhead psychologist judge reinhold who i loved was saying he stopped believing age three when there was like a whistle that he wanted it was a i don't know some whistle thing um so i was expecting it to play in oh they're gonna finally believe tim allen is santa claus when he gives them these gifts yeah that that is what i was just thinking you were gonna say yeah now he does give them the gifts but only after they believed oh right so they actually have to believe before yeah it, it was just really weird so i was like right once he, once they get those gifts then they're gonna believe nope they just look at him and and the mum's like you are santa claus and he's like yeah told you and yeah, it's weird a little bit later here's a gift he, he gets up in the sleigh starts to fly off flies over and drops the gift down for him like well done for believing in me here's your reward <laughs> And one of the things I did like is uh, the whole, I guess, theme of the movie, maybe, is um, seeing isn't believing, believing is seeing. What do you mean by that, Liam? So, you shouldn't have to see Santa Claus to believe he's there. You should believe in him, and then you'll see that he's there. Okay. Right? And there's a brilliant scene between the kid and the psychologist, right, where... Uh, the psychologist is saying something along the lines of um, have you ever seen Santa Claus? And the kid is like, yeah. And the psychologist is like, that's mental. <laughs> and then the kid is like, have you ever seen a million dollars? The psychologist is like, no. He's like, well, just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it's not there, does it? Well, that's a false correlation, that. But It's a pretty smart point he made, you know? It's really not. I probably didn't do that scene justice and got it a little bit wrong because I watched three fucking Santa Claus movies last night. Yeah, that's your own fault. No. What do you mean, no? I wanted this this Christmas special episode to be full of Christmas cheer. And I watched The Santa Claus, and I thought, you know what? If I don't watch The Santa Claus 2 right now, I'm never going to watch it. So, fucking stuck The Santa Claus 2 in, didn't I? All right, well, before you start talking about The Santa Claus 2... Yes. I'm going to request that you talk about them fucking quick. I don't want you to have a whole nother... (laughs) full length discussion about each of these movies I don't want to do that either um, before we get onto that ask me what my score was for no. Santa Claus why not how many baubles did you give it out of five I think it's a solid three out of five yeah yeah that's pretty good above, mm. above half maybe two and a half so dead on half you were completely indifferent to the film ask me again I wasn't indifferent yeah let's say three let's say three alright Let's. it's fucking Christmas let's say three <laughs> Let's say five, Liam. It's Christmas. No, that's Die Hard. That's true, yeah. Die Hard is a solid five-star Christmas movie. Yeah. Right, so that was the Santa Claus. I then watched the Santa Claus 2. So, very quickly, what I liked, majority of the uh, main cast returned. Judy the Elf, you know, the one that hit on Tim Allen. Yeah. She didn't return. But Bernard was back. Same kid actor was back. And bear in mind, Santa Claus 2 was, I think, like a good five years after the first Santa Claus. So I was a bit worried, like, oh, are they going to recast the kid as another little shit kid? Nah, he came back as sort of a teenager. And the storyline to the Santa Claus 2 was actually really interesting. Um, So Tim Allen's been Santa Claus for a while now, I think for eight years. Uh, His kid this year is actually on the naughty list. Uh (gasps) Uh-oh. And uh, there's a little caveat in the contract. If Santa doesn't find a wife, he stops being Santa Claus. Yep, that's... Of course. Of course, Liam. Why why not? I mean, after eight years, you should really be tying that shit down. (laughs) I like that it gives it that much time as well in the contract. Yeah. Understandably, he's going to be busy for the first seven, but come on, year eight. Year eight, he really needs to... And so he's given 28 days to find a wife. So we've got majority of the cast return. New cast members. We've got Elizabeth Mitchell, who you might know as... Uh, did you ever watch Lost? Yeah. She was Juliet in Lost. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I was looking at her and I was like, I recognise your cheeky little face. Looked her up. Bam. Lost. Knew I knew her. And she played the kid's uh, principal at the public school. Oh, okay. Bit of a hard ass, but you know, as soon as you see her, and you, as soon as you see Tim Allen, Tim Allen and her having a little verbal sparring, you're like, right, they're getting it on by the end of the movie. Spoilers, that happens. Yep, fair enough. <laughs> We've got a new number two elf called Curtis, played by Spencer Breslin. Do I know him? Um, it'll play into the Santa Claus 3. Okay. Just wanted to lay down that little nugget, little cliffhanger there. Nice. And uh, we've got Lillian Mummy, who played Lucy. So um, his ex-wife and her new partner have a little ginger kid. Oh, okay. She's annoying as fuck, like all children are. Um, anyway, just a couple of points I'd like to make about the Santa Claus 2. One, like I said before, I do like what they did with the story. Um, I like that this kid's getting a bit older. He still obviously believes in Santa Claus because he has 
proof, but he's also dealing with the fact that he can never tell people what his dad actually does for a living. Yeah, what does he tell them that his dad does? I think he just lies and says he works in toys. Well, not really a lie, but he says he works in toys. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, so there's a scene where the elves play American football up in the North Pole. Right. Which I thought was just mental. Like, it's the North Pole. And I get it's an American movie, but I don't picture anything in the North Pole playing American football. No. Let alone little childlike elves. So that was weird. Again, there was a lot of awkward exposition in it. So Bernard gives um, Tim Allen a watch and he's like, right, this watch, one, tells you how long you've got to find a wife and two, tells you how much magic you can use and if that gets to zero, you can't come back to the North Pole. And it's like, right, thanks for all the exposition, Bernard. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Really liked you in the last movie. I still like you, but come on. And obviously, we've got this issue. 28 days till Christmas. Santa Claus can't be in two places at once. He can't be in the North Pole making all the toys and off looking for a wife, can he now? Well, that's right, because the elves make the toys. Well, he has to oversee them, because otherwise they'd probably slack. Why can't they trust Bernard? I mean, I honestly don't know. It's not addressed. Also, I was thinking, and this ties into the first movie as well, genius way to get around child labour laws. Well, they're not children. No, but they clearly are. No, but they're not. You said they were, like, over 100 years old. Well, yeah, right. In the film, they, they're elves, but in real life, they're children. Right. Do, Do you, are, you try, are you Right, so wait, let me just quickly ask something. Are you trying to imply that the people that made the Santa Claus and the Santa Claus 2 and 3 were avoiding child labour laws by telling actual people that the children they had hired were elves? I'm not saying for sure that's what they did. I'm just saying if they were smart, that's what they would have done. Right, okay. Um... Tim Allen, much preferred in the second movie. He was awesome. And he super rocks a turtleneck. Which isn't something you can say about most actors. No, that's true. Uh, So one of the issues is, as he's looking for a wife, and he's he's got these 28 days, which they keep telling you, uh, something's happening called the desantification process. So you know in the first movie, where I said it's a bit of a body horror, as he starts putting on all the weight and growing all the hair? Yeah. This one, exact opposite happens. He starts losing the weight and losing the beard. Oh, oh no! Now, obviously, he likes being Santa, so that's now an issue. You just can't, you, you can't make him happy, can you? Oh, honestly, there's no pleasing some people. Uh, and, and like I said, so their their genius tactic to have two Santas in the same place, they put him through this new toy making machine thing that Curtis, the number two elf, has come up with, that basically creates a duplicate toy Santa. Oh, okay. And I don't know if you're going to remember this, but the toy Santa basically becomes an evil dictator i do i do vaguely remember as soon as you said a toy santa clone i was like i I remember this yeah and he makes all of the elves his bitch and just works them to the bone (laughs) it's it's just bonkers i'm just watching it and he's like dressed like a dictator he's creating an army of giant toy soldiers and again (laughs) i'm like this could easily slip into horror territory here it's mental it sounds slightly insane it is uh so eric lloyd who returns but as older He's the one that's on the naughty list now. Still a shit, going around graffiti and things. I oh, just couldn't fucking stand him. I really couldn't. But the principal, who, spoilers, Tim Allen ends up getting with, she's awesome. Yeah? She is fantastic. This movie has better CGI. Not an improvement on the first movie, but I like that they tried to do something different. And obviously it all ends happily ever after. Tim Allen and the principal get married. There's some emotion. There's some tears. We all loved it. Moving yeah. on. We had the Santa Claus 3 the escape clause now remember how I was saying Spencer Breslin was in Santa Claus 2 yep he returns in Santa Claus 3 and he brings his sister along for a small little minor role you may have heard of her Abigail Breslin I have not fuck's sake (laughs) um she is (laughs) the main character in Little Miss Sunshine oh okay yeah yeah have you seen that yeah she's fantastic right yeah she's a good actress she is one of the few child actresses that I can stand yeah and even in this, she's she's given like two scenes, but she like as soon as I saw it, I was like, "That's fucking Abigail Breslin. We're in good hands here." Fair enough. So she's new. We have Martin Short has joined the cast as Jack Frost. Right, I have seen the Santa Claus three. Yeah, it's not great. And we've got Alan Arkin as um, the in-laws because obviously in the last movie he got married, so now yeah. he's got to deal with the in-laws. So we've got Alan Arkin as the father-in-law and Anne Margaret as the mother-in-law. I'm going to be honest. I like Alan Arkin. He he was really good. He he does some really good sort of dry deadpan delivery. Uh, so the plot, very briefly, Jack Frost hates being a second fiddle um, and kind of not really being taken seriously. So he decides to become the Santa Claus. And how he does that, basically... You have to murder Santa, right? Sort of. There's, there's 
there's an escape clause in the contract where, right, there's a weird mythological element to this where all of the different Santa Clauses have their own snow globes. Okay. And if you're Santa Claus and you hold your own snow globe and you say, I wish I was never Santa Claus at all, then you stop being Santa. Oh, man. It's really convoluted and bloody stupid, but basically Jack Frost tricks him yep. into doing that. And what I did like, we go back 12 years to when the first movie happened and when Tim Allen shouts out, Oi, up there, and the Santa Claus falls down. And then we actually see Jack Frost become Santa Claus for a little while. And then we jump 12 years into present time and Tim Allen's like, I don't know what to do. I'm not Santa Claus anymore and my life is horrible because I've lost touch with my family. Right, so he, he remembers being Santa Claus. Yes. Okay. But no one else does. Yeah. And what um, Martin Short as Jack Frost has done is he's turned the North Pole into an amusement park. So now, if you want Christmas, you go to the North Pole. So people now know Santa exists? Kind of, yeah. Okay. So Martin Short is fantastic as the villain. Do you remember us saying there's a little ginger girl in the last one? Yep. She comes back. Still annoying as fuck. And there's, oh, there's a bit early on, right? So Tim Allen's still Santa Claus. She gives him a hug. She just thinks he's her uncle. She doesn't know he's Santa Claus. Yeah. She gives him a hug and he says, you give the warmest hugs, Lucy. And then you just spend the rest of the movie just waiting for her to hug someone. Probably Jack Frost. Oh, and warm him up. Yeah. Does that happen? Yeah. Oh, dear. He freezes her parents and then she gives him a hug at the end and warms him up and that stops her parents being frozen. (laughs) Terrible. Uh, It wasn't good. And also, right... So in this movie, Mrs. Claus is pregnant and at the end she gives birth and the movie like ends on the freeze frame of the baby and he's just smirking really creepily at the camera. Is he Jack Frost? He could be. I don't think that the movie was trying to imply that Mrs. Claus was getting a bit of, oh, how's your father with Jack Frost while Santa Claus was busy? But if that's what you want to take away from the movie... I mean, that's what I'm going to take away from you telling me about the movie. That's fair. Um... A couple of issues with the movie. It, it obviously wasn't as good as the first two, obviously. Yeah. Um, for me, you don't get enough of Tim Allen. And he's, you know, he's the star of these. But once he puts on the Father Christmas costume and makeup and all that, he's pretty much unrecognisable. Yeah, he just looks like Santa. Exactly. And I like seeing his face. That's fair. So That's... It, it's not until, I think, like an hour into the movie when Jack Frost's nefarious plan comes to light and uh, Tim Allen goes back to being Tim Allen. So we have like a solid hour where it's just Santa Claus, not really Tim Allen. Yeah. And then we have like a good ten minutes before Tim Allen fixes everything and stops being Tim Allen and becomes Santa Claus again. Oh right, wow, that's so it's not enough, not enough Tim Allen for me. That's fair. Uh, the movie ends with some outtakes, which was quite funny, like that they play over the credits. Yeah. Uh, Bernard, not in this movie. <gasps> he was your favourite character. He was one of them. So disappointed. And do you remember I was saying in the last movie that we had Curtis as the number two elf. Yep. Yeah. He's now the number one elf. But obviously, the kid playing him has aged quite significantly between the two movies, and now he just looks weird. (laughs) Fair enough. One of my favourite things about the movie, though, and please tell me if I'm right here, I think it's being a bit xenophobic. Um, Obviously, Santa Claus doesn't want the in-laws to know he's Santa Claus, so he makes the North Pole look like Canada, gets all the elves to dress up in, like, Canadian hoodies, and when they arrive, they were like, Welcome to Canada! A, eh? is that a bit xenophobic? No, not particularly. It is like playing on the stereotypes. Yeah, yeah, and enforcing it's definitely playing them. on the stereotypes of Canada, but it's not xenophobic. Okay, xenophobic that's... would be if they were like, and then a Canadian actually shows up, and he's like, look at all the maple syrup. A, that would have been xenophobic. Right, fair enough. That sounds like a lot like the reindeers in these movies. Thank you. I was being comet. Or at least you weren't being Chet. Oh, I remember that. What's Chet is in the Santa Claus too. He's a new reindeer. Oh, just don't bother. He's a bloody waste of time. I can't remember that. Jesus. Yeah. So yeah, I quite liked the whole let's pretend this is Canada. And um, sort of Alan Arkin gets to play a bit dim and he's like, what's going on? Uh, Why are they all little? And Tim Allen's just like, that's how they are in Canada. (laughs) Oh, that bit might be xenophobic. That does happen. So yeah, I did wonder. But yeah, so overall, I did end my night feeling quite Christmassy after watching well, three Well, I'm Santa super Claus glad because you very clearly disobeyed rules of sort my culture so I hope you finish tonight looking back on what you've done and regretting it. No, I've, I feel like I went above and beyond and yes, um, exactly. I think our listeners are going to be one, impressed with my dedication 
and two, kind of glad that they now don't have to watch the three Santa Claus movies. Is that, so you think you think that the listeners that took issue last week with me taking too long are going to be happy because I took less time, but you took longer? Yeah, but... Right, you know. okay. No, just wanted to check that that's what you thought. We'll see. <laughs> Let us know, listeners, when you uh, listen to this, <laughs> if Liam's failed to cut it down to a reasonable length, <laughs> uh, how annoyed you are that he watched three films instead of one. <laughs> it's Christmas! Oh, dear. If you can't watch three Christmas films at Christmas, when can you? You can. Just don't talk about them on the podcast. <laughs> I think you're just jealous. I'm really not. Well... I mean, I wish you'd found a really good Christmas film for me. Well, next year. I, I can promise you, unequivocally, next year, the Christmas movie I will recommend you will have boobies. I'm going to hold you to that. Yeah, as long as you don't watch the Christmas movie, I'm going to recommend you next year between now and then. Or if I haven't already seen it. You haven't seen it. How do you know? I know you haven't seen it. How do you know? Because I know you. I might have seen it. You haven't seen it. Okay. You're now going to spend the next year watching as many Christmas themed movies <laughs> Just to as you try can. And ruin it for you. Yeah, so next year you'll be like, I did see it. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. So, yeah, that was the Santa Claus trilogy. Good. good. I guess we just wrap shit up now, don't we? Yeah, final thoughts. Like a present. Yeah, hi! Um, final thoughts. My final thoughts, Liam. I can are... guess. <laughs> are they? I wish you hadn't watched and talked about three movies. Quite possibly. It's Christmas. This episode can be a bit bigger. Can it? Yeah, right. How good is it when you're expecting a present under the tree and you look and it's bigger than you were expecting it to be? Yeah, but That's how terrible brilliant. is it? How terrible is it when you say to your parents, I really don't like Polly Pocket and they buy you three Polly Pockets? Well, <laughs> uh, no one said that to me. <laughs> My final thoughts for this week, Liam, are that I really wish you hadn't watched three films and you're a bit of a dick. My final thoughts are... You're jealous. And um, also, Zach Efron, hit me up. <laughs> Listen to the end of the podcast to find out how to contact us. <sighs> so, I think we've done enough movies now. Yeah, we might have, Liam. I mean, I've done four. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's too many. <laughs> yeah, so um, next time, what do you say we mix things up a little bit? Yeah? Yeah. What are you thinking? I'm thinking, <laughs> how about a graphic novel? I'm in. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right. I am going to recommend to you something that I mm, kind of enjoyed, but I'm curious for your thoughts. I don't think you're necessarily going to enjoy this. I'm trying to get your expectations right, because I don't want another Christmas evil. Yep, fair enough. So I might not enjoy this one. No. It is, however, written by Alan Moore. Okay, Alan Moore's pretty good. Co-written by him, I guess. It's um, it's called Superman, Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow. Cool. Uh, So that's your comic book to read by next episode, which will be in the new year. Yep, yeah, we're having a little bit of extra in between the episodes over Christmas. Uh, Listeners, that gives you even more time to read what we're going to say and let us know what you thought of it. Yeah. Because it would be delightful, wouldn't it, at the end of the show to have a little correspondence where we read out what people have been saying. It would be really good, but our listeners don't love us enough. So maybe uh, you guys out there could fix that. Love us more. It's Christmas after all. Come on. That's all I want under my tree. Your love. So cheesy. So what are you going to recommend for me? The graphic novel I'm recommending for you, Liam, is uh, called Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. And I really like this, so I'm kind of hoping you do, but I know that you aren't his biggest fan. I've only read the first volume of Sandman from his, and I mean, I've heard nothing but good about Sandman. And it really didn't do much for me, so... Yeah, I'm hoping that... Because this is all one story wrapped up in one graphic novel. So I'm hoping that that will be more to your liking. Guess we'll find out. Yeah. Should we end that more positively? What what was wrong with that? Okay, we'll just leave it at that then. Thanks for listening to the Nerd on Nerd Christmas special. If you want to get in contact with us, you can tweet us at Nerd on Nerd or email us at nerdonnerdpod at gmail.com. Oh, also, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all, and to all, a good night. Bye. Ho, 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 ho. Also, have a happy new year. Just stop adding on more goodbyes to the fans. We'll see you <laughs> next year. And to all the Jewish fans out there, happy Hanukkah. Don't drink and drive. Don't drink and drive.